Good morning, welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Monday, July 19th. The opening sentence is from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. Morning prayer begins on page 12 with a confession of sin. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Jubilate in page 15. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord... He is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. We'll now have the Psalm readings and the New Testament reading. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 47 and 48, beginning on page 328 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 47. O oh, clap your hands together, all you peoples. O oh, cry aloud unto God with shouts of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He shall subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout of triumph. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. Oh, sing praises. Sing praises under our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Think upon his mighty acts and praise him with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered with the people of the God of Abraham. For the mighty upon earth have become the servants of the Lord and he is very highly exalted. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In the city of our God, even upon his holy hill. The hill of Zion is beautiful and lofty. It is the joy of the whole earth. Upon the north side lies the city of the great king. God is well known in her palaces as a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth have gathered and advanced together. They marveled to see such things. They were astonished and fled in terror. Trembling came upon them and anguish. As upon a woman in travail. You caused the east wind to blow and broke apart the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, 
so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God, uphold her forever. We wait for your loving kindness, O God. In the midst of your temple. O God, according to your name, so is your praise to the world's end. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the cities of Judah be glad. Because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count the number of her towers. Mark well her bulwarks. Consider her strongholds. That you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide, even unto death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our lesson today is a reading from St. Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians, beginning with the first chapter, the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in the whole of Acacia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we have behaved in the world with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely so toward you. For we are not writing to you anything other than what you read and understand, and I hope you will fully understand, just as you did partially understand us, that on the day of our Lord Jesus, you will boast of us as we will boast of you. Because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first, so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. 
And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your our not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. For I made up my mind not to make another painful visit to you. For if I curse you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I felt sure of all of you that my joy would be the joy of you all. For I wrote to you out of much affliction and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. Now, if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but in some measure, not to put it too severely, to all of you. For such a one, this punishment by the majority is enough. So you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him, or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I beg you to reaffirm, reaffirm your love for him. For this is why I wrote, that I might test you and know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle today is found on page 79. It's the Mania et Mirabilia. The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The collect for this day is found on page 22 at the bottom of the page. A collect for the renewal of life. 
O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now the time for prayer and thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We praise you for the many blessings we know await us. We ask that you guide us in our paths, every footfall, every minute, everywhere we go. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit so that when we are filled, we then may pour out even more to those around us so that they may know your love, your immeasurable love. Help us also to follow our homework from the bishop, to read our Bible daily, to pray to have an even larger infusion of God's love into us, and to pray that the household of Christ the King will be a place for your Holy Spirit to dwell and be protected from all assaults of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we come to you today with, with hearts filled with thanksgiving um, and still processing the message brought to us by Bishop Stephen last week. Um, we ask that you help us to acknowledge and be aware of the ocean of love of which he spoke. Help us to have the courage to step into it and float in it and to share it with others, to introduce others to it. Know that it is indeed there for us, a gift from you. And we thank you for our new church home from which to worship you and in which to enjoy your presence. We ask you to show us how to be um, good representatives of you in Albuquerque and in this world. Show us how to minister to Father Pete and Beth and their family. And uh, just to be good Christian men and women, all these things we ask in your name. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom on, found on page 26. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.